Hi, my name is Jason Bell. I'm an engineer and I developed the Tipum bypass cable. Two versions shown here with uh, details, uh, complete build plans shown on my website. Uh, also due to request, uh, I'm also building these for people uh, and selling them on my website. But I'm going to show you how these work to solve the problem with a fuel pump relay on a 2011 Dodge Durango. I believe also 2012 as well and many Jeep Grand Cherokees and other Chrysler vehicles. Uh, suffer from the same problem, which is a faulty $5 fuel pump relay that either stays stuck in the on position or won't fail to, to open at all. Um, so if you've experienced uh, any problems with your vehicle related to you know not starting, just keep cranking over and over and over and over, and then perhaps eventually starting, or if you've experienced uh, situations where you pull into the garage and your fuel pump continues to run, you can hear a noise in the rear of the vehicle, uh, therefore draining your battery in the morning, then this simple little cable, one of these two cables, will actually solve your problem. I'm going to start with some details of the Totally Integrated Power Module, or TIPM, uh, also known as the fuse box, located underneath the hood here. So we're going to go through that in detail now. This is the TIPM, the Totally Integrated Power Module, and I've since taken my system apart and uh, soldered a fuel pump really on there myself, but it's very difficult, it requires a microscope, soldering skills, and you risk damaging the TIPM, which is about $1,000. So in order to bypass uh, a fuel pump relay and uh, do a bunch of testing to determine whether your system is good or bad, we're going to use one of these cables here. This is uh, the uh, bypass cable with an LED. It's got a little LED down on the end here, you can see. And it's got a green or black ground wire as well. So I'm going to go through here and show you M25 is actually your fuel pump relay. It's this fuse right here. The side closest to me is what delivers power to the fuel pump. The side furthest away from me, that leg of the system comes from the fuel pump relay, which is usually you know, the faulty relay in many cases. Now, this is where we're going to try to deliver power to and bypass that fuel pump relay. But we're going to do some testing first. And we're going to use, uh, whenever we eventually do bypass it, we're going to use this M7 fuse here. This is a, normally the rear cigarette lighter on this particular fuse. And if you, you work uh, with the two left legs here, as shown in this position, this is the default position that my vehicle came in, that means power is supplied to this circuit only when the vehicle is on. Uh, now, if you were to take this fuse out and stick it in the right legs, that means power is always on. So I guess some people may want the, uh, the rear cigarette lighter to be on at all times, uh, at least available at all times. So we're, uh, we're going to use this particular M7, M7 circuit to our advantage whenever we're testing, and I'll show you how to do all those tests. Uh, fuel pump test, fuel pump relay test, and then the actual bypassing the system to stay on the road. And if you take your vehicle uh, to the dealership, a lot of times if you have a fuel pump relay problem, they'll tell you it's a fuel pump. So you'll be able to actually show your dealer that it's not a fuel pump issue. So the first thing we're going to do is grab this fuse puller back here. We're going to grab a hold of M7 and we're going to remove it. Okay, and then the more tricky one is actually M25, the fuel pump relay fuse. We're going to go ahead and grab all of that, give it a pull as well. Set it down right here. Now, in order to test your fuel pump, which is a very common misdiagnosis from Dodge, uh, we're going to do a, a couple of simple things. We're going to actually plug in the LED end of our device. This is the uh, the more fancy device that we sell, uh, it's got an LED and a ground wire and allows for additional testing of the fuel pump relay, but we're going to just test the fuel pump at this point in time, so I'm going to slide this in here, just plug it right into the slot, and then I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to plug in my ground wire to this ground stud right here. So anytime I want LED feedback, I'm going to have to plug in this little ground wire to the stud, just so I can see what's going on, and make sure I'm actually delivering power to the system. So now I'm, I'm going to use these right two slots of M7 because I know they're delivering power regardless of uh, whether the vehicle is on or not. So my vehicle is actually off right now. I'm going to plug this in and you should see a green light light up. And if you go to the back of the vehicle, you should be able to hear the fuel pump pumping right underneath the gas tank. So I can hear it running right now. So I know that the LED says I'm delivering power from M7, well, I'm bypassing everything and delivering to the fuel pump so I know that my fuel pump is working properly. It's getting power via the LED, I can hear it running, it's pumping perfectly and you're not going to damage your vehicle by pumping like this for short periods of time. So this concludes the fuel pump test, a very simple test that you can use 
to determine if you have a properly working fuel pump or to go back to your dealer and say it's not my fuel pump, it's probably the Tipham and hopefully get that covered under warranty. Okay, now we're going to do the fuel pump relay test and uh, this is one of the simplest tests we're going to perform. You should have already had the LED side of our cable assembly plugged into M25. So uh, this is the fuel pump relay circuit. So in order to tell whether the fuel pump relay is actually putting power across these two terminals from the rearward side to the front side, uh, all we got to do is plug this cable assembly in here. We're going to attach a green uh, ground wire over to the ground lug here. And once we start the vehicle, what's going to happen is if this rearward side of the lug is actually providing power, it's going to light this LED. So now I'm working off, a, this is a good vehicle here. Uh, and it's been repaired, so what you're going to see is when I start it up, the light's going to remain green and the vehicle's going to start, meaning it's providing power across this circuit and the fuel pump is on and uh, the green uh, LED indicates proper power. But what you may see if you have a faulty relay is this LED will flicker on and off, meaning the relay's kicking on and off. Or the, the light may not light at all. The LED may not be lit up at all, indicating that your fuel pump really will not, uh, is actually not functioning. Or you may find a scenario where your fuel pump is on all the time so right now while your vehicle is off you may see this light lit up uh, at this point in time uh, and we've got a solution to, to, to fix that here in the very end but I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask my wife to go ahead and start up the vehicle right now you're going to see the screen light come on the vehicle is going to start up properly okay. okay as you saw the vehicle started the light lit up uh, as I mentioned before, if you have a faulty relay, you may see, especially in the morning, that light will flicker. The vehicle may actually still stay running, or the light may not stay on at all and your vehicle will not start. So if this light is either flicking or not on at all, you have a bad fuel pump relay. Now the final of our three tests is to actually bypass the system and keep your vehicle on the road. So what we're going to do is keep this cable, plugged, the LED side, plugged into M25, just like you saw before. And we don't need the, the green ground wire anymore. That's just for our testing purposes. We've already determined that our fuel pump works properly. And perhaps we, you've probably determined that your fuel pump relay is faulty. So in order to keep your vehicle on the road, we're going to plug the other side of this circuit into the leftmost slots of M7. These are the ones that only provide power when the vehicle's on. So let me go ahead and plug that in right now. Okay. Now you probably want to take this... Uh, and wrap up some tape around this uh, green ground wire here because you see this lug back here that's actually your positive lug if this were to touch here you're probably going to do a lot of damage uh, it's not a good thing so wrap some tape around the green ground wire keep it over to the side you can actually close the the tip on box uh, cover over top of that while you're running but uh, we're going to go ahead and start the vehicle and, and show you how this works uh, so whenever we start it up power is actually going to be coming from this circuit m7 rear cigarette later across the cable and down into the fuel pump assembly. So go ahead and start up the vehicle. See, starting up fine. You'll notice I don't need the LED feedback, but if I wanted to, I could simply you can see as I touch it, I'm still getting power all as well. Now, if you're one of the people that has a fuel pump that's uh, always pumping when you turn the vehicle off and your battery's draining, here's what you need to do. You need to actually take off the lower fuse. I've taken off this lower fuse on this LED side. And once you go ahead and plug that in, that'll actually disconnect power from that faulty stuck-on fuel pump relay and only deliver it from your M7 fuse. This is the simpler version of our tip on bypass cable and it's a little bit cheaper than the one that contains LEDs and ground wire. Uh, it's just basically two out of circuit devices uh, attached to, to one another. Now you can use this for everything from the fuel pump test, uh, so plug it in to M25 and to the right slots in M7 you can hear your fuel pump working. You're not going to be able to visualize and see that with the green LED. You can also bypass the system, that's the left slots of M7 over to M25 to keep your vehicle on the road. And additionally, you can also pull that lower fuse if you have a stuck fuel pump on situation. So uh, pull this bottom fuse here that I'm touching uh, and insert this into M25 and this into the left slots and this side into the left slots of M7. 
uh, if your fuel pump is stuck in the on position draining your battery. So this cable actually does pretty much everything that the other one does. The only thing it can't really do is test your fuel pump relay. Um, that's better done with, uh, with LED feedback so you can see if the, uh, especially if the LED is flickering on and off, you know the fuel pump relay is toast. Uh, by then actually you should probably be able to realize if your fuel pump relay is faulty or not. Uh, you can also stick a multimeter down in uh, to M25 there whenever someone's starting the vehicle and if you don't see any voltage, no 12 volts across those leads, uh, you'll know. Or if your vehicle's not starting all, in all likelihood, you have a bad fuel pump relay and hopefully you've tested your fuel pump to determine that other components within the fuel system are working properly. So this cable may actually suffice for a lot of people. Uh, it's pretty simple to build as well. But of course the, uh, the more complex cable, uh, like I said, it's got a 12 volt green LED with a resistor. Uh, also a green alligator clip or black alligator clip in some cases uh, will suffice. Now also keep in mind um, you'll see all of our cables that we send out they actually come with uh, with two fuses on each end. Now technically yes I could only provide one fuse especially on the M7 and to deliver power uh, and over on this side I could do the same I could really just provide one fuse you can see it on this end there's one fuse on the er there's actually two fuses on this end. Um, I've pulled this one for testing. But uh, I'm going to supply you with all four fuses in this scenario. You don't need them all, but they're kind of handy for testing. And you know, For example, on M25, pull this one if your fuel pump is stuck on. Um, I guess this extra one over here will serve as a spare. You can continue to use your rear cigarette lighter, perhaps when your vehicle is uh, in the accessory position with this as we've delivered it. But um, I've had some questions about that, and I just kind of want to answer that as well. Uh, also, uh, all of the cables that we provide are rated for 20 amps, so a lot of times if you go to uh, some auto parts stores, these out of circuit devices are not uh, capable of pulling 20 amps and they'll get really hot. We've had a few callers that uh, they've, they've phoned me up and, and said, my cable is really hot, and I said, it's probably undersized, and that's actually a, a little bit of a risk. So make sure you've got uh, 20 amp out of circuit cables, it's a little bit of thicker cable than what you'd find, and you can, those are likely available online and not so much in the auto parts stores from what I've found. Uh, if you have any questions on this bypass tip on cable, uh, feel free to let me know. Again, my name is Jason Bell. I'm an engineer. I spent a lot of time tearing apart this, uh, this tip on system multiple times uh, and repairing it and studying elect uh, electronic schematics to figure out how to make this cable and hopefully it'll save you a few dollars. I know a lot of people uh, can't pay a thousand dollars for a tip on and this little simple cable here will solve all your problems. Uh, now keep in mind also uh, Dodge does have a, uh, a recall on some of these vehicles and they've got uh, a little band-aid type fix where they, they uh, cut a bunch of wires down here and you tip them and all that. Before you go that route or have anybody do that for your vehicle you may want to at least make sure uh, with this particular cable with the LED whether it's indeed your fuel pump relay that's the problem. So this cable will allow you to, to, to see what the problem is before you spend any more money on something bigger. Again, any questions, give me a call.